It's football stalkers, and we are at Hard Rock Cafe in Menlin. The vibe is there. Look, people are chilling. People are enjoying themselves. Football stalkers, you need to come out. You need to come here. Every Sunday, we're going to be here. 3 p.m., we're going to be here. We're going to be talking football. If you want to join in, just come. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy the food. Enjoy the drinks responsibly. You know, Mus. Let's go. Let me see. So, in this segment, we're going to be talking about the selection criteria of Bafana Bafana and the main date from the coach or any coach. Doesn't have to be Molefenseki, but any coach. And then we move on to looking at Cape Town City and Bloom Celtics. And lastly, we're going to talk just a little bit about the stadium attendance issue in this country. Now, the criteria of Bafana Bafana. You know, these two, the mandate and the selection criteria, I feel that they linked. You can't separate the two. Why? Because if you give a coach a mandate in saying that he needs to qualify now for the AFCON, he needs to qualify now for the World Cup, then it's understandable for the coach to opt for experience. It's understandable the coach to go for... And when we speak about experience, I think generally we would think all the players. And sometimes, you know, supporters, we tend to be like, yeah, but why is this player still there? But it's because of the experience. It's because they've been there. They, they know what to do and what not to do. When you pick young players, it's a risk, especially from a coach that has to produce results. Now, we've seen them with some coaches who've done that and succeeded. And we've also seen those who've done it and they failed. So we need to start establishing, I think, as a nation, what is the mandate? Now, when we start here, I think the most, I think, important question that we need to look or ask as South African people is that South Africa is not what it was as a footballing nation. We're not what we think we are. Personally, I don't think we are what we think we are. We are ranked 72 in the world. We are ranked 13th. Oh, actually, we are ranked 14th in Africa. So we're not at top side as we think we are. So why are we behaving in such a way that we think that we are? So what should happen is that we need to look at the drawing board from to say we need to have a, a plan. And when I say, you know, sometimes, and I understand from people that, yeah, there's too many plans, there's, but there's no action. But a plan is important, and we need to have a plan. I shabu, ganadzens, ganadzens. Kimo hadrok chance. Moto tsansa utlemonat. That's how it is. So we need a plan. And the plan is. I will give an example. Look at the Belgium team. So with the Belgium team, what you had is that they built... 20, it took them 20 years to have that golden generation that we would glorify. Your Eden Hazards, your Kevin De Bruyne and your Lukaku's and the Vincent companies. It took them 20 years to build a team. How did they do it? They had a plan. Just like in rugby. And I think it's something that we as South African football nation, we need to adopt. Same as Saru, same as the New Zealand rugby or any other federations around the world, especially in rugby and what we find in other European countries in football. There needs to be an identity of what is South African football? How as South Africa do we play? Once we establish how we want to play as a nation, then brochures will be then issued out to your school, from school level to varsity level, where it needs to be the same system all the way to the senior system. Now, I know it's going to be a bit tricky, especially considering in the PSL where it's all business there. Teams have their own systems of playing because you are there to play for results. But now, if we look at the schooling system, it's very vital that players who are being groomed from a very young age understand the way of playing in South Africa. That way, it makes it far more easier to succeed at the national setup when you already know what system that you are playing with. Now, I don't want to dwell too much on this whole thing, but I'll, I'll give an example. Take, for instance, Ngubeni at Celtics. He's playing as a winger, but he's playing in that counter formation, the 3-4-3, the, the three, three, where he has less defensive duties, more attacking. So he bombs forward, he puts in the crosses. 
you look at a typical Cape Town city where you've got your Mkize or you've got your, um, but let's say Mkize as a, a normal fullback. He has attacking duties, but at the same time, he's got defensive duties. He needs to bomb forward, but he also needs to come back and cover. Now, imagine now you go to the national setup where they're playing a normal four, whether it's a 4-3-3 or a 4-4-2. When Gubeni doesn't excel in that formation, we shouldn't be surprised of that. Why? Because he's used to playing in the four, in the, in the three, four, three formation. So there needs to be a clear indication from school level as to what way do we as South Africa expect to play. Going back to the criteria, once we determine to say, listen, we are not so great team as we think we are. So whatever plan we have. It can't be a four-year plan. It can't be an eight-year plan. It has to be more than that. It could be a 10-year plan. And we need to be patient with that. When we start doing that, then we, we are able to select based on building what we need to build. How do we build that? Now, everything, all these body parts are linked to one objective. What objective is that? Having the one of the best nations in football. Grooming players from a very young age into playing a certain way. Franchises need to be communicated to. There needs to be this constant communication between the national setup and the clubs as to the progress of players that are identified. Now, not to say that 100% of that is going gonna, is gonna to work out. You are going to have cases where it doesn't. But that's where it comes in. You know, those players who excel later on in the season, but it becomes easy for those players to fit in into the system because it's not a whole team. It's just a few players. So the criteria, the mandate, they linked. What do I think the criteria should be? Long term. We need 10 years to build. That's what I think. So the young guys need to, to be given the spotlight. They need to be played in there. So experience at this point on, I would say, hasn't given us anything. We've been playing experience. Where are we as a nation? Nowhere. We're still one of the lower sides. We're not our top side. So we need to change. How do we change? Bring in the young boys. Groom them. Play in a system with, that we as South Africa can identify and say, this is how we play. Preferably, I would want us to play in this modern way of playing football. A 4-3-3. Three, three. three middle field. One holding, two attacking. One on the left, one on the right. This one, I think, is something that would suit us best. It's good when we are defending, but it's also good when we're attacking. That is the system that we need to adopt. What is the criteria? Well, you select players that you understand their level of technicality and performance, but players need to also understand that consistency is key, like in any other uh, team across the world. It's not just you just being a player selected from a very young age to play there, but you need to be consistent. You need to be performing at club level. So that is very key, that constant communication that players need to understand. If you're not performing, if you're not consistent, you are not going to be selected. So with Mulefin Seki at the moment, I wouldn't fault him that much because his team selection, I approve of it because I, I see it as he's selecting based on merit. But the problem, what I see, is that there's no continuity with him. He's chopping and changing his team. If we look at the game against Zambia, if we look at the game against Namibia, if we look at the game, um, the one we saw on Friday, there needs to be continuity. You, we need to see the lineup and say, this is the team that Nseki has formed. That is very important. But we'll see. His mandate, till, to, till now, I don't know what's his mandate. Is he... Is he coaching to qualify for the AFCON or is he coaching to qualify for the World Cup? Or is he coaching to build Bafana Bafana? But look, have your say. We're going to give you the WhatsApp number here below. Send us a video on what you think is the criteria and the mandate of the coach. Sunday, the much anticipated match, Cape Town City and Broom Celtics. Now, I did say that I like how Cape Town City plays. But I'm going to dive in and look at both teams and how they play. Now, Bloom Celtics, they use a 3-4-3 a three, three formation. I call it the contest system. 
we saw it at Chelsea and now we're seeing it at Bloom Celtics where they're using Gubeni and they're using Baloi as the wingers who bomb forward to put in those crosses and also try and score. Now in their center of their midfield, we've got Lituli and Palani. Now those two seem to be the core combination of Bloom Celtics. Now we've seen this season that they tend to change a little bit, but their core two midfielders are those two. They're good. I'm not going to say the most exciting, especially considering that they were too defensive starting out in this season. I think they're more about results. You can see that. But they're still a young team. They're still exciting. Especially with Gubeni, a bright star. I like that boy playing. The way he plays. He's tall. He runs. He's quick. He's skillful. I enjoy, I enjoy him. Now, if I look at then Cape Town City. Now, Cape Town City play a 4-3-3 formation. Now, this is your modern formation that you see in today where teams opt to play three middle field. Now, the question is, in that three, are you playing with two attacking midfielders or are you playing with two defensive midfield? Now, they've got Ndanzani, they've got Nodada, and they've got Mokeke. Now, that is, for me, one of the deadliest middle field in this country. The way City plays, exciting. The game is just entertaining. The problem is just their defense. They're just conceding a number of goals. They just need to close it off. Um, and I think it comes with having possession. It comes with controlling play. The, team, the teams will try and play on the counter. And this is what I expect on Sunday. Celtics would probably try and play on the break. We've seen that, that they were playing that same system against Pirates. The, we've seen that do the same thing against, against Supersport United. And when they tried to play open, the results were not favorable to them. So I see them being more on the defense, absorb the pressure and try and play on the break. Whereas Cape Town City will try and, and have those combinations. I mean, we see Ralani last season, top assist. He plays on the left. He will be combining with Umtanzani. He will be combining with Uno Dada. So Mokeke, there is that chemistry. Ulake, like, hey, he's a good player, but he's not clinical in front of goal. So he's not that kind of player that you would rely on to score goals for you. Erasmus leaving has put him in a situation. What happens? Well, the other play Morris as a striker, who is not necessarily a top striker. Or are they now going to play in a different system of playing two wingers and overloading the middle field with more players? I would say leave that. What works for City is playing in a 4-3-3. My prediction is I think City will take this one. I would say it's a 2-1 score. Definitely. An exciting game, that's for sure. Well, last part of the show. Look, stadium attendance has been an issue. Supporters, including myself, have been calling for us to go back to the stadium. Uh, because of the love of the game, guys. Look, we all want to go back. We all want to enjoy the game. We all want to watch our, our players being added. But also, if we look at the Bundesliga in this case, they were the first league or the, one of the top leagues in the world that introduced fans going back to the stadium with obviously social distancing and all that. But what they then experienced after that is there was a spike in coronaviruses. I mean, we're talking about 14,000 plus infections um, through people going to the game. So that's alarming. We're, we're trying to curb this thing. We're trying to defeat the virus. And as much as I'm always being overcritical about how things are being run in the PSL, but when it comes to this situation, I'd have to look at things from a practical point of view and say that we are not ready. I think we'll never be ready with coronavirus of actually going to stadium. But people then would ask the question, but what about clubbing? What about going to restaurants? I mean, what about this? You know, you're not wearing a mask and all that stuff. But the difference is we're talking about our passionate game. You know, when we're out there in a the game, there are those who want to sing. There are those who want to chant and stuff, you know. And are we, are we going to be able to really control ourselves and not being able to sing or, or shout? Unlike in a restaurant, where in a restaurant you're not going to shout. You're not going to scream. You're just going to sit and enjoy your meal and have your conversation with whoever you're out with. So 
I think for me, this probably closes it in saying that I don't expect the PSL to allow um, people going back to the stadium. But also, I mean, guys, you know, it's not like we 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 one of those leagues where we're talking sold out games every game. Depending on which team is playing, I mean, even your Kaiser Chiefs playing against the Marisbeck midweek doesn't even fill half of the stadium. You know, it's just a handful of stadium. I mean, I understand. I'm one of those handful of fans that go to those games. But I think considering that, and especially from an advertising point of view, remember now there's all those banners from stadiums that the virtual ones that are being used to advertise uh, all the sponsors. So from a, from, from a money point of view, there's not really much of an incentive as to why fans should be allowed to the game when they've already established what they've established where, you know, from a sound point of view, from a visual point of view, it looks good. You know, maybe from a player point of view, it's not as motivating as it was having your fans supporting you and pushing you to do something. So, but I don't, I don't see it happening this season until we actually have a vaccine and we can defeat the Rona. But um, apart from that, it is what it is. But look, it's the master tactician fan. We are at Hard Rock Cafe in Menlin. The vibe, you heard the music, the playlist. Mwah. Huh? People are chilling here. They're enjoying themselves. Mwah. We spoke about football. Mwah. Well, I mean, I, I think, I, I hope that you enjoyed how I dissected the game and how I saw the game, right? But apart from that, the food. Mwah. You can ask me how he knows. Um, so, I did say the WhatsApp number below, right? Make sure you send your one-minute video. Tell us about the game. Tell us about what we just discussed. Give us your view. We'll put it on, right? But also, you know what to do. You can find us on Facebook at Football Stalkers. On YouTube, you're going to find us at Football Stalkers. On Twitter, you're going to find us at Football Stalkers. And on Instagram, you're going to find us at Football Stalkers. Look, we're everywhere for you. Whichever platform you want to lose, just go there and comment. On YouTube, subscribe. Turn on the notification. Like and share. Facebook, do the same. Share, like, and comment. On Twitter, comment, like, retweet. On Instagram, like, share, bona, zonke, bonke. It's Football Stalkers. I hope that we're bringing the content to you. You can come through. You know what? Every Sunday, ne? Zwagala yi, mo Hard Rock Cafe. Main lane. Come through, 3 p.m. You'll find us here. Maybe we'll have a conversation with you about the game. I'm signing out. I'm signing out. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. I hope you enjoyed us looking at the game. Cheers.